All right, like I promised, this video is sort of in response to Bash's video about where do you draw the line. Um, and he, I think, was expressing having problems getting all players to show up on time, I think, or some players not being able, excuse me, to show up. Um, and when do you kick somebody out of your game? Uh, and when do you talk to them? Because the general consensus is that you should talk to this person a couple times before reaching that point. So with that said, I'm going to say a few things. Uh, I think this hobby is such a small hobby that I think we, as enthusiasts of it, need to realize that we are sort of the face of this hobby, especially to people that are just watching our videos. Um, with that said, uh, as I've said in other videos, I think we should try and be as positive as possible when it comes to handling situations and not not making a situation worse than it is. Um, so, for instance, um, what I mean by this as, is, you know, if somebody is new to the hobby and they're seeing our videos about problem players and things like that, we need to make sure that they know this isn't a reoccurring thing because it's not. I mean, I've played with countless groups and had one problem really, uh, well, maybe two. Uh, one, uh, one problem was, again, um, a player kind of being picked on for things that weren't necessarily his fault, um, like a disability or some kind of learning, like handicap or something. I'm not exactly sure, but there was something there. Um, and people were giving him a hard time getting annoyed with him and frustrated with him. Um, ultimately, it wasn't anything personal. Um, it was just not a lot of patience. But, you know, that's that. Um, and then the other situation was I played in a game where I lived too far away, and so I wasn't always able to make it. And so I was probably part of the problem player situation. Um, with that said... Um, you know, I don't think this is something that happens a lot. Um, and I think we need to remember that this hobby isn't really as mainstream as I think it may have been. It, if it was mainstream in the 80s, I was really too young to realize it. But um, in my lifetime, it doesn't feel like it's ever been super mainstream and that a lot of people play it. I think more people play it than I've realized, but... Um, over the years, but I don't think uh, it's extremely popular anymore. I think it's making a comeback, though. Um, and so I think we, one of one of our goals to help the hobby should be to help it grow. Um, and so we should try to work things out with people in our group. Maybe they're not right for our group, and that's one thing, and that's fine. But try to keep a, a positive relationship about it, and... Uh, you should be fine. Um, so, um, so if we're trying to grow the hobby and not push people away from gaming, because I think that's important. When you have a problem player and you go to talk to them, you don't want to push them away from the whole hobby at, as a whole. You know, if if their style doesn't work for you, maybe they aren't into, for instance. They aren't into the role-playing aspect as much as others, and they're more into the the dice and the number crunch and just seeing the results of their roles and stuff. And they're a power gamer, and you're not a power gamer. You know, that's fine, you know? And maybe you just talk to them and say, look, you know, that's not this group's style. You know, we've, we've talked about this before, and, you know, we enjoy this part of it. And encourage them to keep playing and encourage them maybe to seek another group um, or adapt their style to the group, you know, and play with what the group wants to play. And maybe every time you start a new uh, campaign, you guys discuss, hey, you know, we've done four adventures where we're all, you know, um, where we're all low-level, weak characters. Let's do a one-off where we power game the hell out of it, and if we're having fun, we continue for a session or two. Just to appease maybe this player who's trying really hard to adapt to your style. Um, and so I think dealing with problem players isn't as simple as telling them that they're wrong and they need to change. You know, some, you sometimes you need to work with them 
and maybe they'll work with you, you know, come up with a compromise, just like any personal relationship with someone. I think you need to compromise. Now, if they're just failing to show up and, you know, maybe they're just the kind of person who's not dependable. Maybe they're the kind of person that um, has kids um, and they can't always find a babysitter because they don't have a reliable babysitter. Maybe you have to take into account that they get sick a lot or, you know, they don't have reliable transportation, you know, a whole bunch of reasons. Um, maybe you just, one, need to count on them not being there and just don't reward them. Don't give them experience points. You know, their character's off, you know, back at the city doing something, you know, or in camp or whatever, you know, and... Uh, at the start of the next session, real briefly, just say, hey, give us like a two-minute rundown of what your character did while we did this last time. Because as a GM, you're going to give them a rundown of, uh, at least I do, when you pick up a session, you kind of give them an overview of what happened last time so they can get back into the mindset of where they were. Um, so, you know, I don't think it's as simple as talk, talk, talk. You know, pull them aside and tell them they're doing something wrong. I think... Sometimes you need to compromise, too. Um, for instance, in the play styles. Um, so, yeah, that's my thought on problem players. I haven't had a lot of them, so I'm pretty fortunate. Um, this is why I enjoy gaming with family members, I think, because you already know what you're getting into. You already know your family. And so when you um, go to play with them, you kind of have um, personal expectations before you have gaming expectations. And uh, I think the same thing can be said if you've been friends with someone for a long time, um, instead of just playing with random people. Um, I played with a lot more random people than friends and family. Um, but again, most of those have been good situations too, for me. Um, so, yeah, if you're having problems with problem players, maybe part of the problem too is you're not flexible enough. Maybe you're you're not willing to compromise some of your beliefs. And I'm not saying you necessarily have to, um, but I'm saying, you know, it's something that if it's important to you that this person's in your campaign, um, then you should probably try and compromise with them. If you have a wait list of seven people, you know, heck, maybe you tell this guy that you got somebody willing to play this style, but you know of some people he might be able to play with. And then you refer him back to the people on your wait list and they can get their own group going. You know, maybe that's a great way to do it. Um, you know, so there's there's many ways to handle problem players. There's not one way. Um, and it just comes down to the personalities involved. So if you have a problem player, you know, figure out Try to think about why they are actually a problem. Are they a problem because of your expectations? Are they a problem because of the group's expecta expectations? Are they a problem because of their personality? You know, there's a lot of different things to take into account. So, you know, handle it the best way you think, but try your best not to push someone away from this hobby. I encourage all of you to try and make sure that um, they know there's a group out there for them that would probably further meet their needs. Um, short of offending anyone, I've, I probably would never kick anybody out of a group. Um, and if they do offend someone, I believe in second chances, depending on what the offense is. So that's it. Sorry for another long video. Have a good one. Bye.